Well, Leeds fans, what was that? Absolute crap, wasn't it? Absolute rubbish. Uh, you know, you come on these videos and you try, and I did it with my preview, and I thought of where the ways Leeds can beat Southampton. Multiple ways. And I still believe that. Multiple ways we could beat them. You know, they lost four on the bounce coming into Planers. Ipswich had outplayed them. They couldn't get anything off Ipswich. Leicester, they were being battered on multiple attacks, transitioned on, counter-attacked. Um, Leicester held firm. Vestergaard and Callum Doyle mopped up. The blueprint was there. I mean, I, 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 listen... I thought when, you know, they're at home, it was going to be a reasonably difficult task. I think I said it was going to be 2-1, or, or, or I think it said it was going to be like 1-0 or 2-1. He didn't turn up. Didn't fancy it today. And that's what I can put it down to. Didn't fancy it today, I thought. Showed a glimmer in the second half. Goal from uh, Pascal, fantastic finish. But overall, it was dog shit. Absolutely horrendous performance. Worst performance of the season. Worse than Birmingham. Um, we let Southampton play through us. We showed them way too much respect in that first half. It was as if we were playing a Premier League team and, oh, we can't get too tight with them. Um, we made Adam Armstrong look like R9. Um, Ronaldo into Milan and ex-Barcelona, if you don't know what R9 is, the abbreviation. And then they go 1-0 up inside 1 minute 47 seconds. Offside, it was definitely offside, but the the, the the officiating in the championship is that dog shite that you 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 know you listen you, you've just got to play to the whistle. Liam Cooper was atrocious for the first ten minutes. The starting lineup had Liam Cooper and Dan James in. How I react, how you guys know I react, you play your best team. Dan James is not your best winger. You've got Jane and Anthony on the bench, who has got ridiculous numbers in the championship last time he played. He was very, very good. This isn't hindsight. You guys know that I've spoken about this before multiple times. It's not reactionary. I've spoken about this multiple times. Let me just touch on Dan James for a second. He's bumbled and assisting against Millwall. He's, I'll put this out on Twitter, he's been in about eight or nine acres of space against Watford and put the ball in for pro who was unmarked. Listen, it's, it's still two assists, but let's contextualise a lot of Dan James's play this season, which has been wasteful and will always be wasteful. It has been really bad. 80% of the game against Watford, he was he was literally bunning balls into Rose Ed. He was scuffing balls. He was under-hitting balls. He was over-hitting balls, but that always gets overridden because he's got an assist or he got an assist from a corner. And uh, the same thing against Millwall, really, when he came on. First 10 minutes, atrocious. Atrocious when it came to ball at the feet. But he was stretching the game a little bit. And that's where he's at his best when he comes on on the 70th minute. Jaden Anthony is a better starter and was a starter for Bournemouth in the Championship. And was a starter for Bournemouth in the Premier League. Joe Rodon is miles ahead of Liam Cooper. We were at a disadvantage last week. I understand why Daniel Farker did it. You don't want to change a winning team. But at the end of the day, Daniel, when you've got better players on the bench and you are playing against a relegated side, a top three, four, in terms of calibre side in the division, you start your best players no matter what. Because, you know, they might be a six, seven out of ten on the day. They're going to cause you problems. They cause us problems today. They beat us up in all ends of the pitch today. Defensively, they cope with us marvellously. They got enough bodies back every single time. Weren't able to transition on them. And when we did transition on them, Rutter was wasteful. Somerville was atrocious on set pieces and was wasteful as well. Dan James is always wasteful, naturally. And Perot wasn't in the game. And we've seen this a lot with Yoel Perot. I think it's, it's becoming very, very obvious now that Perot is just a finisher. I think when it comes to game state, and Leeds being, you know, at points where they need maybe Perot to drop deep, get hold of the ball, manipulate it. He's not going to be involved in these games. He's not going to be. And there's been a lot of games now this season where Perot has just been non-existent. You know, he's got six goals for Leeds so far this season, of course. But maybe we need an introduction of something else to involve him in games a little bit more. Because I don't want Perot to just be involved in games and scoring goals. I want him to be involved in the process of Leeds United building attacks as well. And at the minute, he's just not. Like, in certain games, he's completely absent. I want to say shout-out to Kamara, 
who I think was the best Leeds player on the pitch today. I thought Ampadu was, as he said, guys, listen, I'll say it every single time. Ampadu's off it. And I will sit in there. I will try to be as objective as possible. Kamara was off it. Southampton were applying a high press and we could not deal with it. Could not deal with it. And it was evident today that, uh, you know, when a very, very good calibre side is able to press us really, really high and effectively. And we saw that within five minutes, by the way. Five minutes of that game. They, they pressed us that high that we were panicking. And when you've got Cooper and Strauch, two left footers who are being pressed, who were not good under a press. I think Strauch is. 100%, but I think Rodon brings the best out of Strout. Rodon can bypass a press as well. I don't know why Farker didn't see that. Really, I don't, because Liam Cooper has never been able to bypass a press. What Cooper does when he's pressed on is pass the ball back to Elan Millier. And even championship level, Billy Sharp has mullered Liam Cooper multiple times, as has Neil Morpé for Brentford multiple times. Very similar style strikers at this level to Adam Armstrong. Farker hasn't realised that. He's put Cooper in there because of sentiment value. Vibes FC from last week, completely different game. And instead of bringing in a press-resistant defender, who is the best defender we've got, who can bypass a press, use his left foot effectively, use his right foot effectively, in like unbelievable in the air, Millwall being the classic example, he's gone with Liam Cooper, who really in a... a, a, a really in about a two to two and a half year period has, has barely been able to string together two consistent performances. He'll have a one-off good performance, but two, three consistent performances, Cooper's not been there. Has him. And you start your best team. It's Farkas' fault back today for me. We came out flat. Um, Dan James start, and he's a 20-minute impact player, and that's the best you're going to get from him. His decision-making, I said this on Twitter, if Jaden Anthony is exposed to the same amount of game time as Dan James, he's on double the assists at this moment in time because Leeds have been very, very good in the offensive third and the amount of football we funnel down that right-hand side towards Dan James is startling to me. I'm not saying Somerville was good today because he wasn't, but why on earth are we funneling the ball to Dan James when we know how absolutely rank he is in the final third? Yes, he's got four assists, one was bumbled in, the other is in eight and nine acres of space where he literally cannot not make an assist with Perot's movement in the box and Watford's dire marking. Credit to him, he's got four assists, but how wasteful he is, is, it just kills Leeds. There was three moments in that second half where Leeds are, on a trans, are in a transitional moment where it's three on five, Five on three, whatever. The, the numbers are equal. Southampton's midfield has pressed on a little bit. We've bypassed it. We've got beyond it. Dan James wastes the moment every single time. And in his head, he must think to himself, oh, I'm going to get these moments all the time. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And this is a high quality side in this division, no matter how they've been over the last four games. He's nowhere near good enough. He's, only, he's a super sub. That's what he is. And that's the best you're going to get out of him. As hard as it is to hear everybody, as hard as people want to love him as much as they can, and you can love him. But in terms of quality, Jaden Anson is another level to this geezer. He's been absolutely peppered up by Leeds fans who are looking at this assist chart and seeing him at the top of it. There's context applied. There is so much of our play that is funneled on the right-hand side. He should be double that. And I and I genuinely believe Jaden Anthony will be double that. And, and, and Dan James was a big problem today because any time we were actually getting beyond, he was killing, killing anything productive we had. Bad decision-making, crosses with his left foot, straight to Bazuna, Bazuna's hand. Crosses going literally in, 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 in critical moments. Crosses getting to that point on that right-hand side, ballooning it to the other side. You know, a chance where you've got Perot in the middle, Jorginho Rutter in the middle, and he shoots, side netting. Just cross the ball. Drill the ball over. Use your brain. But that's what I mean. But if he'd have got an assist today... According to some fans, that would have been a good day at the office for him. People need, to start, people need to start looking at the full game, not just the fact that he got an assist or whatever, because he's too wasteful. And he would make Leeds so much more comfortable if he was more productive earlier on. Um, yeah, but but Anthony was poor. Uh, sorry, An Ampadu was poor. Kamara I thought was very, very good. His best game for me in a Leeds shirt. Good under pressure, good in those moments. Shackleton, really poor. 
Byron Paul, the whole defensive line, unable to cope with the press. Unable to cope with it whatsoever. Um, which was killing us. And, and Armstrong and um, Suleiman were having a field day. An absolute field day. It was easy. One of Southampton's easiest games they'll play this season. And a real shame to see what Leicester and Ipswich were able to do to them. How they were able to tactically hit them and, and, and not struggle. Um and Leeds were struggling today. And it sort of puts into perspective, Leeds have had a, a really good moment, a really a good last month. But this really, you know, puts into perspective that there is still a long way to go with the manager as well when it comes to his decision making, but also with some of the players. Um, a, a day off for Leeds, a, 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 mad, a mad sort of like moment, and hopefully just one in a million. But... It shows that Southampton is still in that question about who's going who's gonna to be going up, even with four losses, because they've still got that quality. And it still shows that Leeds aren't just going to get automatically promoted. There is, a, there is a potential now, after today, that and it might not when this video goes out, but Ipswich could potentially be 11 points ahead of Leeds, as could Leicester. That is going to be a lot to make up. And the reality of that needs to hit some fans. But listen, I thought we could have got them today. And I stand by it all. We could have got at them today, but they didn't. Leeds didn't come out, we didn't tactically prepare, the manager didn't make the right decisions at the right time, Dan James and Liam Cooper should have been off at half-time, didn't happen, waited for the 70th minute, and, and, and poor decisions by Farker, not enough bravery by the Leeds side, not pressing as a unit, and getting pressed on as a unit, and Southampton were in full control, fully deserved by them, thoroughly disappointing with Leeds today, and let's hope it's just a blip. Guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think, and I'll see you in a bit.